The night crossing was an experience I shall never forget as long as I live. We, we were happy we were with each other. We give each other good security and we were very glad to be as one, for one, we were all together on the boat heading for Normandy. On July the 6th, 1944, we reached Normandy. We were ready to disembark from the bigger ship into smaller landing craft that took us to the shore. We were heavily guarded by airplanes. The Germans were threatening all over. You could see they were German planes and they were out to get us. We finally got into the smaller boats and got to shore and quickly dug a slit trench to be able to have cover. The Germans were flying around all over, but thanks to our allies, they protected us. In between quiet times, that was when we weren't strafed by the enemy, we would take a little walk from our trench. On one of my uh, occasions of going for a walk, I seen a beautiful purple glove. Oh, what a beautiful purple glove it was. I said, oh, that would be something to hang on to and keep as a souvenir. I picked it up, looked at it, then turned it over. There were the man's fingernails. It was a man's hand. I shall never forget it. On another occasion, I walked into the damaged church and across the rafters in the church were German soldiers hanging in their uniform dead. They apparently were spies. The smell was something awful. It was horrendous, but we put up with it. I just can't remember how long we were there on the beach in the area by the church. But finally we were, to, a call came that we were supposed to move towards Khan. Khan had apparently changed hands several times and we, as Calgary Highlanders, the second division, took off and went to Khan. While going through the city, the devastation was horrendous. Dead animals lay in the street. The smell was beyond how could you ever stand such a smell. It's just something else that I just cannot forget. They marched us to the other side of the city where heavy shelling was going on. Our friendly shelling targeted a hill kind called Hill 67. The shelling continued heavily. Suddenly we were told to charge, take the hill 
at all costs and hang on to it. We had to go through the grain field, which was waist high, and up, even up to our chest, and go through. The Germans were all over the place. When we could see where they, uh, when the heads started breaking away from the top of the grain field, we knew it was duck take cover quickly as possible as you could because the Germans were all over, like I said. On one occasion when I went down, as I was going down, the bullets were swooped across the bottom of me. They didn't hit me, but they hit the ground. I was very, very fortunate that trip. We struggled our way through the grain field. It was horrible. It was just awful. Anyways, we finally reached the hill. We got to the top of the hill. And we dug in quickly because the enemy was shelling us something horrible. You could see there were fewer Calgary Highlanders. They must have been killed or wounded going through the grain field. There, there just wasn't that many Calgary Highlanders left. And I can remember my fellow Bren Gummer, he requested I come into his slit trench with him. Come, George, come quickly as, po as possible. Come to me, we'll be together. And I finally went in. The shelling was very, very heavy. We ducked our heads. We stuck our head up above the head when the shelling ended. Where my slit trench was, was a big hole. I guess it was, thanks, Bob. Thanks ever so much for helping me. I was glad that I was with him. Fighting kept to be heavy. The Germans even took feed on an ambulance and blew it sky high. It had wounded on it. Well, I guess the enemy, leave it to the enemy. Anyways, we finally had control of Hill 67. In the morning, they took a roll call of D Company. All that was left and alive was one officer, one corporal, and 11 men. I was one of the men. They uh, put me into an ambulance, and one thing I just couldn't help but think, and the rest of us surviving boys, we wondered, did the Germans nearly annihilate the Calgary Highlanders when the regiment captured Hill 67? I ended up in the hospital. Whatever happened to me, I started to cough 
viciously and just couldn't quit coughing. And they just loaded me on a, on a uh, jeep ambulance because the ambulance was uh, blowing sky high. And that's the way they took me to the hospital. I, we sped down the hill through the grain field and beside me was a minister. He was a wonderful person. I must add that the church ministers, Catholic, Protestant, whatever they were, they were absolutely phenomenal. Their feelings was for the boys and for the boys only, and they did a marvelous job. We finally reached a hospital at Bayou in Normandy. It was a British field hospital. I was put in bed and several beds down below me were two German prisoner of war. The nurses looked after the prisoner of war patients like they looked after us boys that were patients in the hospital. They were just absolutely wonderful, those nurses and the doctors. I have never in my whole life seen anything like it. Finally, after several days, I was able to go out and walk around the hospital was also able to set step outside. On one of my walks, I saw a tent that had an opening in it. I got inquisitive as I was getting my strength back. I walked in, what did I see? Dead boys laying on the ground. I said to myself, my, oh my, what would a mother say if she saw her boy laying there on the ground like that? I thought to myself, why couldn't they have him laying on a table or maybe even on a blanket? Those poor boys, there they lay. I can recall the Dutch people being so good to us in Holland. When the war ended, they begged me to come out and celebrate with them because they were so happy the war was over. I couldn't go out. I lay on the bed. The tears were flowing for my buddies back in Normandy. That's all I can say. I'm sorry the tears came. Please forgive me. We did the Normandy Beachhead, the Seven Beaches. It, that was a real experience. And we took our shoes off and walked in the Atlantic Ocean. When we went over there and seen the devastation, you know, the great big craters and Point du Hawk and all those terrible places, that uh, you realized how bad things really were. And you know, 
you realized why they didn't talk about it. It was so bad. And so, so George talked about it when you came home. Yeah. Right. So how did how did how do you think you helped him? Oh, I think by just we went over and we seen where his bodies were buried, and we went and we seen where, uh, you know, the difference. We went to Con and different places, saw these churches and everything. So, you know, with the two of us, and we seen the airfields and all the doodle bugs and all that stuff. It, then he, you know, once I seen what it was, it was easier for him to tell me what happened. But it was quite a trip. I, it was a wonderful trip. I'd do it again. I thank God for protecting me like he did. And most of all, I thank him for Fern, my wife, for she is a beautiful gift that God gave me.